Welcome to CTV Sports Monday. The boys of the Press Cup are still taking a break during the school holidays, so on the show we will take a look back at some of the sporting achievers we've had a look at in the past, including orienteering, gymnastics, karate and two different forms of climbing. But first, croquet. Last year, Annabelle Jackman went to meet Laura Whittaker. Croquet is a sport which originated in Europe in the 18th century, and generally it's been a relaxing pastime of the older generation. Well, that was until 15-year-old Laura Whitaker came along and knocked all the stereotypes for six. at a friend's house up in Mochawaka and I thought it was heaps of fun so I thought I would go down to the club in Christchurch and I joined straight away. Since joining the Edgeware Croquet Club three years ago, Laura's rise up the local and national croquet ranks have been meteoric and also influential on her family. Yeah, Dad started playing a season after I did just because I always went on about it at home. And as a Year 11 student at Avonside Girls, Laura probably doesn't get many opportunities to discuss the finer details of her sport, like double banking, balking and bisque with her school friends. But not that that would deter Laura. There's mixed reactions. Um, most of them think it's pretty cool. Um, I had a friend start up lawn bowls after she heard, and yeah, I'm trying to get a few of them to start up too. And it's not just amongst her school friends that Laura has stood apart. Her talented, uniquely decorated mallet definitely set her apart from the usual croquet set. I decorate my mallet with stickers and at the moment it is covered in photos. But yeah, it's not a very traditional thing to do. In shock, horror, Laura's even brought her iPod along to matches to help her zone out and focus, something that stirred up much talk amongst the traditional croquet folk. We've had a few complaints about that, but it's because it's a new thing that's just starting to happen, but everyone's pretty good with it. And although her mallet may be rainbow coloured and her mind far away off listening to her favourite song, when Laura steps onto the croquet lawn, she means business. And this year she won the prestigious Arthur Ross Memorial. It's New Zealand's handicap competition, so it's association croquet and we you go up there for three days and play three days of games against other people. It used to be a straight knockout but they've changed it so that you have chances even if you lose games. But Laura didn't need any second chances, winning eight games straight and becoming the first ever female and youngest ever winner of the huge trophy in 80 years. And Laura has an unconventional way for how she'd like to see her name displayed on the silverware. I would like it to be underlined and bold and in italics with an exclamation mark at the end, but I don't know if that will be acceptable. And although New Zealand croquet may not allow for any fancy engraving, they have selected Laura to wear the silver fern later this year. Yeah, we're going to Australia in November for the Women's Golf Croquet Worlds. A selection which topped off a dream season for Laura. Um, I didn't expect it, seeing as I had only been playing golf croquet for a very little time, but it's fantastic. And between now and November, Laura's croquet is only set to improve under the watchful eye of two of the world's top croquet players, who Laura considers her mentors. Jenny and Chris Clark, they've been amazing coaches and they've taught me a lot of things. Um, there's other people just around and about who do really interesting things, which I would like to put into my own game. And there's no doubt Laura will continue to play the game her own way. After all, she's had plenty of success doing it this far. Late in 2009, Laura was runner-up for the plate at the Women's World Golf Croquet Championships. Well done, Laura. Next, we get up on a cool, frosty morning for a little duathlon training.
cold, frosty Christchurch morning, Tessa Walker is regularly found doing some form of exercise. The St Andrews College Year 13 student leads a busy life, and she says the last five years multi-sport has been a big reason for her hectic schedule. When I first came to St Andrews, I started off running. I got asked by a coach, and I used to train Tuesday and Thursday evenings with him and other days during the week and things. And then I did the odd duathlon because I'd always done a wee bit of cycling. And then after the Pebble Ginger Athlon series, I got approached by Rolly, who's the triathlon coach, so, and he wanted me to start swimming. So I started swimming and things, and then did that whole season. Um, so that was just in year 11, in the end of year 11. But Tessa was unofficially competing in triathlons from a much younger age. I um, did the Wheat Weeks Kiwi Kids Triathlon when I was six, <laughs> illegally. <laughs> and um, I've done, I did it every year. I've got, I think, eight medals for <laughs> the Wheat Weeks Kiwi Kids Triathlon. And all of those years of hard work and dedication have paid off for Tessa, with selection into the New Zealand team due to head off to the World Duathlon Championships very soon. It's in less than two weeks. We leave on the 20th of September and it's in North Carolina in America. And both my parents are coming along and it's um, a 10k run, 40k bike and 5k run. So. It's the age group champs. So. In North Carolina, Tessa will line up against the world's best under 19 dual athletes. So, in preparation, yeah. she's been putting in hours of training. It's daily, morning, usually morning and afternoon. Apart from on Fridays, it's usually my rest day where I have my massage and chiropractor. And she's very fortunate she's not adding physio to that list after last week having a nasty crash off her bike. Yeah, I was coming down the um, Port Hills, down Hackthorn, nearly at the bottom. and. Just went around a corner and my brakes were a wee bit loose and lost a wee bit of control and hit the curb. So that was a bit scary. I was a bit scared that I'd broken something. I had to sort of check everything and make sure it was all alright. So yeah, that was a bit scary, but luckily I'm all good. Yeah. All good apart from some nasty scrapes and bruises, but Tessa says she's got plenty of motivation to keep her going. Just it makes you feel real good when you do exercise and things. So that just um, and I. Just, I just think of the races when I start getting not motivated and like it's always after a race that you start wanting to like train more and train harder so you've got to think about how you feel in those races and so that the race goes better next time. But aside from the training, Tessa also has a lot of other interests including singing in the St Andrews Barbershop Quartet, playing the guitar and being deputy head at the college. So it begs the question how she finds time to fit everything in. It's pretty hard, I'm usually pretty busy but yeah, I enjoy being busy and having heaps of stuff on, so I just don't stop that often. It's usually my chill out time after prep, so like 8.30 till I go to bed, yeah. And although she doesn't quite know what to expect from the trip to the World Champs, she's certainly looking forward to it. Um, just the experience of it and the atmosphere and things of being at a World Champs, so it'll just be cool to be my first one and hopefully I'll get to go again someday, yeah. Tessa has been doing well, winning first place in her age group at the World Duathlon Championships in America after the break sport climbing and long jump.